there's a real honour in giving hope to the lives of others. To see their strength, to see them take on the world. We each have a totally unique mix of DNA and finding a match for a stem cell transplant is extremely tough. Your DNA may be the only chance someone has to survive. The bigger our database of donors, the higher our chances of finding that life-saving match. So how can you give hope to someone's life? If you're wondering why they need to give hope, well, here's something to think about. Leukemia is a devastating disease that can affect the young and old alike. Each year, 35 in every million people learn that they have leukemia. And five of these will be children. So today we discuss leukemia. And with the help of our expert guest panel, we'll look at the different types of leukemia, the impact that this dreaded disease has on children and adults, um, causes, risk factors, treatment options, and support. Now, at the end of this show, you'll hopefully be inspired enough to give hope to someone else's life. Now, this expert guest panel today is comprised of a clinical hematologist, a clinical health specialist, and the CEO of Sunflower Flying. Now, we invite you to please be part of this show by asking the panel some questions or simply just sharing your views with us. And the number to call is Johannesburg 714-6918 or 6919. You can also tweet us at SABC Health Talk or simply just interact with us on our Facebook page, SABC Health Talk. Now we're going to go for a short break, after which we invite you to sit back, relax, and learn from this bumper show ahead. I'm Dr. Silo Daung, and this is Health Talk. Welcome back. Well, we're going to learn more about leukemia, and let me welcome um, our special guest. Here in Johannesburg, we have Alana Jones, James, rather, sorry. Alana is the CEO of the Sunflower Fund. Welcome to Health Talk, Alana. Thank you very much. Good to be here. All right. Well, and uh, again, now in our Cape Town studio, we're joined by Dr. Sharok Narwa. Dr. Narwa is a clinical hematologist, and he's based at the Hematology and Bone Marrow Transplant Unit at the Melamot Dokai Hospital in Cape Town. Welcome to Health Talk, Dr. Narwa. Thank you very much. All right, let's stay with you. We're talking about leukemia. Just give us a sense of what it is that we're talking about. What is leukemia in simple terms? Leukemia in simple terms. So, so leukemia comes from the Greek word leuk, means white, and emia, blood. So basically it's an abnormal growth of white cells in the blood. And blood originates from the bone marrow, so the disease originates from the bone marrow. But we have to actually make a distinction between acute leukemia and chronic leukemia, because both are very different in their presentation and also in their treatment and their survival. Mm. With the chronic leukemias having a superior survival, usually above 75%, um, and the acute leukemias are more aggressive. I actually belong to the, one of the most aggressive human cancers that exist. All right, we're going to come back to the um, different types. Survivals about 50%. Yeah, my apologies to interrupt. We're going to come back to the different types and the you know, clinical courses and prognosis and so on. But for now, we understand that is a disorder of you know, the, the blood system, as, as, as you say. Let me come back to Alana. Alana, how common is this? In my introduction, I mentioned, you know, um, 35 out of a million people. How yeah. common, yes, or do no. we know at least what the prevalence is? Yeah, so the, st the stats that we have from the US at the moment is the most prevalent stats, and there we're talking about a 70% increase 
um, in cancers globally that they should be seeing in the next 10 years. Mm. So that's quite frightening. From our perspective, not being on the medical side directly, but on the support and awareness and the recruitment of stem cell donors, we are seeing a huge need. Um, mm. Over the last six months, we've seen probably triple the number of patients coming through to us for assistance, mm. and they are getting younger and younger. Well, maybe you might as well just tell us a little bit about what the Sunflower Fund is. I see you wearing all of these colorful things around your neck, your wrist, and uh, yes, I'm also wearing one like yours. Thank just you tell for us the a little support. Bit about what all these Perfect. Are. So this is a taupe or a tube of hope. We've launched it with our Sunflower Day campaign, which takes place on the 15th of September. Right. And purchasing a taupe from Pick and Pay or Zando online, what that does is it's part of our fundraising. Because um, for every donor we recruit, mm. it costs us 2,500 rand for that genetic test to put a donor onto the registry. Mm -hmm. So this is part of our fundraising campaign, but even more importantly, mm -hmm. it actually forms part of our biggest awareness campaign in South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also in Namibia at the moment for this campaign. So really, what do we do? We create awareness around the need for stem cell donors, mm -hmm. what it actually means to be a stem cell donor. Okay. We then educate around the process of becoming a donor and we fundraise to yeah. grow the donor registry. Are we talking about a condition that some people may not know about? What's the level of awareness in our communities around, you know, this condition, leukemia? Look, definitely more awareness mm. um, needs to be done around it. I think it's growing, though. People are talking about it more, but mm. there's still a lot of myths mm. that we have to work through. Right. So, you know, only in recent years do we call it stem cell donation because we actually harvest your bone marrow stem cells, yeah. um, not your bone marrow itself. So right. people still remember the old words of bone marrow, bone marrow and they yeah. think we're going to drill into your bones or yeah. they think it's a, a painful process to yeah. donate, which yeah. it isn't. So there's a lot of education that needs to happen okay. around we're gonna, that. We're going to talk a lot more about it. Let's go back to Cape Town and speak to Dr. Nara again. Dr. Nara, we were talking, we had just started talking about the different types of leukemia. Um, and, you know, you, you said that, you know, obviously there's acute ones and there's chronic ones. We know that there's, people talk about four common types of leukemia. Just, please just take us through these and, and tell us why should we know even about the different types? How common are they? Yes, yeah, so leukemias are rare cancers. I mean, we are talking about less than five per hundred thousand uh, for the um, acute leukemias and for the chronic a little bit more. Um, look, chronic lymphocytic leukemia is probably the most prevalent one, mm. which means that there are probably a lot of people already living in South Africa with this condition without knowing it. Yeah. Um, most of the people are above 70 years old that get this condition. And most of these people don't ever need treatment and it will not affect their life expectancy. Mm. But for some people um, with a more um, uh, aggressive course, with other words, with symptoms and clinical signs um, and abnormal blood values, um, they need treatment. Um, but the overall outcome is good, 75% um, for, yeah. the, for the whole group. Yeah. Um, if we talk about chronic myeloid leukemia, which arises from your um, other type of white cells, um, they have an excellent outcome because now we can treat this specifically with um, small molecule treatment uh, in the form of a tablet um, and has got excellent survival above 90% uh, with only 2% of people dying per year okay. of this condition. All right. Um, for the acute leukemias, it's a different story. Um, these are aggressive cancers. They need very intense chemotherapy. Hmm. They are usually very sensitive to chemotherapy with high remission rates um, above 60 to 80 percent. Um, but the survival is much less because about half of that, because many of these cancers return because the, uh, the um, genetic abnormalities are usually harboring in the stem cells. Yeah. We're going which to talk are about within genetic... your bone marrow and are very difficult to destroy with chemotherapy only. All right. And that is where eventually then the stem cell transplantation plays a major role, where besides the stem cells, we also um, transfuse um, immune cells. So mm -hmm. it's actually an immune 
hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. All right. We re replace the immune system of the patient by the new immune system of the donor. And then this new immune system of the donor will then attack the leftover cancer stem cells in the bone marrow. Right. And that can give a potential cure. All right. We're going to talk a lot more about, you know, cure and treatment and support and sort of thing, that sort of thing uh, later. But for people watching, you know, the show, the, the question probably is, now how will I know I have leukemia? Are there any typical signs and symptoms perhaps? Well, chronic um, leukemias, they are, as the word says, they are chronic in onset. So many of these people are not aware that they have it. Like, especially for chronic lymphocytic leukemia, it's usually incidentally found by a routine blood test. Mm. Uh, but some people may have enlarged lymph nodes. Some people may have tiredness. Some people may have abdominal discomfort due to a large spleen. But those are just uh, uh, far few in between. Mm. For the chronic myeloid leukemias, um, they can also have um, a high white cell count and incidentally found on a routine blood test. Mm. Or they might have tiredness due to anemia. They might have um, a large spleen. Mm. Um, so many of these patients with chronic leukemias are found um, by by chance. All right. Okay. Now, for acute leukemias, that is not the case. Right. Um, they, these aggressive cancers, they present with uh, usually severe tiredness, fatigue, due to anemia, uh, lack of red blood cells. They can present with severe infections, mm. due to abnormal white blood cells, and they can present with bleeding. Um, in the form of uh, bruises or gum bleeding or nose bleeding due to low platelet counts because right. the cancer grows so fast in the bone marrow that it replaces all other normal blood cells. All right, let's just hold it there because we need to go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion and this time looking at, well, who gets this? Who's at risk of getting leukemia? Please stay with us. found out on the 20, no, on the 10th of June 2013. Um, we didn't find out exactly, but like it started with the symptoms. I had different symptoms every single day, whereas I would get fatigue symptoms, um, a blood clot in my eye, uh, some lumps on my neck. And then from there, that's when we took a stand and went to the hospital and found out what was going on. They took some FNA tests where they had to inject, where they had to extract some juices from my lumps. And then it took about one week for us to get the results. That's when they told us that I have acute leukemia. I had to stay in the hospital for the whole year, whereas I had to take intensive chemo for the first four months, where I was drinking 28 pills in the morning and at night. So it was quite tough because I couldn't go home, I couldn't go to school, I couldn't have like some friend time with my friends. So yeah, it was quite tough, but eventually I got over that. And then the results that actually came out from the experience is that I got to be uh, a Sanders ambassador. So in that way, I would say it's a blessing in disguise. That's where we, we put in the importance of uh, donating blood because it's quite good, it saves lives because I, I received over 40 pints of blood. So if it wasn't for people who donated, I don't think I would be here. So that's why we need to get people to donate out there and save more lives. With the type of cancer that I had, it, it's not genetic, it's not food born, or it's the type of cancer that can occur on anyone at any given time. So the doctors haven't actually found, found the root cause, they just know that it's not genetic or food born.
before the whole treatment, I didn't use any spectacles. Um, there was a type of chemo called cytosa. Um, it's the side effects are uh, it could make you blind or it could temper with your eyes. That's why right now I'm using spectacles because of that side effect. Pay attention to the symptoms because the symptoms are not exact. They, you would think it's, a, it's a, another type of disease because whereas I got lumps and I got gum problems, we went to the dentist because we didn't think it was something serious. So whenever someone sees a sudden change in their body, they shouldn't wait for it to get worse. They should take a stand and go to the doctors. <laughs> Wise words from the young man. Alana. Let's take it up from what he's saying, you know. He says advice. I mean, you deal with this, mm. you come across these people almost on a daily basis. Yeah. Just comment a little bit on symptoms. I mean, just now, I mean, he was talking about advice. What yeah. do you normally come through? I think, you know, we get a lot, um, especially from parents at the moment, when we ask them, how did, you, how did you find this? How did you get to your doctor for this kind of diagnosis? Um, we've got um, one boy at the moment who just had excessive bruising. Um, and because he's quite an active boy, it was written off to school sports, but it was constant and it was painful and that sort of soreness or, or tenderness, um, you know, so there was that. And then we've got a, another one of our young patients who was complaining about constant headaches and migraines and went to the doctor, you know, had sinuses, had, you know, all of those checks done and it just persisted. Yeah. So I think from our side, we talk about always encouraging people to have a healthy, active lifestyle because that is the one thing that would definitely help. Mm. And when we talk to our survivors, they always say that one of the best things that they've done to help them get through the treatment was that they were active and healthy. Mm. And just to pay attention, to pay attention to your body and, you know, just to investigate and mm. not just I exactly that advice yeah. um, that came through on the video. Something else that he, he spoke about how leukemia you know impacted his his life basically yeah. from your experience what is the impact that leukemia has on people look Im impacts him, it's phenomenal what mm. we see and it's heartbreaking because when we look especially at the younger children who are diagnosed one parent generally has to give up work so financially there's a massive impact you're in and out of hospital if you're the adult with leukemia it's really difficult to hold down a job with treatment you know your social life changes you can't go out because your immune system is compromised so going to the movies or going to your school sports or to the office um, so that's while you are having treatment or waiting for a stem cell transplant and then post transplant the impact I think differs person to person, but we've just had an amazing experience where just yesterday, one of our survivors, Ray Funnel, and his son, Jay, uh, have summited Mount, Mount Elbrus in wow. Russia, mm. which is the highest peak in Russia. And if I'm not mistaken, it's one of the 10th highest peaks in the world. Mm. And they summited that yesterday. Well, there's um, hope after treatment, isn't there? There's hope after treatment. And All there right. they are in the front page of the Lifestyle magazine this morning. Um, flying the sunflower banner of awareness mm. and they did Kili, um, Kilimanjaro last right. year so I think it's about a new lease on life as Ray yeah. always describes it and just one thing from the video to grab onto is the importance of donating blood. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit later let's just Thanks. cross to Cape Town and speak to Dr. Nara again. Dr. Nara that young man spoke a little bit uh, you know referred to um, you know causes and risk factors and was told that it was it was not genetic Let's talk a little bit about causes and risk factors for leukemia, please. Yes, well, look, um, in general, um, environmental um, factors play a major role in the cause of cancers, like smoking, um, being exposed to chemicals, occupational, your work with other words, um, pesticides. I mean, we are exposed to all kinds of environmental hazards. And they certainly have also an influence on the cause of um, blood cancers or leukemias. Um, but it's not always easy to find um, a definite cause for these patients. There may be a family history, um, but that is not often found either. Uh, children, um, they can also develop uh, leukemia. It's the most common cancer in children. Um, but um, they are usually very well easy treatable and have very good outcome um, 
most of these children will survive um, and have a normal life expectancy. And that is um, specifically for acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which has a not so great outcome in adults, but a fairly good outcome in children. So to summarize, um, environmental causes are important um, with a genetic predisposition, with other words, um, the um, tendency to develop, to develop cancers because of your um, um, ancestry and your genetic uh, makeup. Mm. Well, you, you're based in a leukemia center, I mean, obviously where you see quite a lot of this. Just comment a little bit about impact, the impact of the condition on society, and you can broaden that a bit even to you know, the healthcare sector and so on. Yeah, look, acute leukemia is a dreadful diagnosis, so it is, has a huge impact on the patient and on the family. Um, the advantage f um, for children is that um, because they are so young and healthy otherwise, they can tolerate intensive chemotherapy quite well. So th the outcome is, is very good for children, um, which is fantastic. Um, for adults, it's going to be a little bit of a tougher path. Um, they, they don't always tolerate chemotherapy that well. They have got maybe underlying conditions, hypertension, diabetes, um, chronic bronchitis, um, heart problems. So they don't always tolerate chemotherapy that well. Um, and they, they may battle uh, to get into remission and to enjoy a prolonged survival. Um, so we always try to select out the good candidates for intense chemotherapy. Um, and then once they, we get them into remission, um, then we can maybe um, proceed with a stem cell transplantation if we find a suitable donor. All right. Let's take Virginia on the line from Johannesburg. Virginia, welcome to Health Talk. Excuse me? Um, we have a caller on the line, and her name is Virginia. Would like to ask a question. Virginia, are you there? No, Virginia is not there. We'll try and get back to it. Virginia, are you there? No. There's a, there's a problem or other with, with, with the line. Perhaps you want, you know, from a, you know, dealing with this. I mean, obviously, Dr. Nara spoke about the impact. Just mm. carry on in terms, especially children. What, what do you experience? The, the chances of finding a match if you're a patient in need is one in a hundred thousand mm. at the moment, which is why we are encouraging people to join the registry to become a stem cell donor. Um, we currently have 74,000 donors registered on the South African Bone Marrow Registry, mm. and that needs to be increased a lot. Mm. So I think it's really difficult um, when we're dealing with children All and right. adults. Um, I, I believe Virginia is back. Virginia, are you, are you, are you there? Yes, I'm, I'm Okay. Your, your question or comment, please. Yes, my question is, um, <clears throat> like, uh, I, I was donated a uh, bone marrow yes. for my late brother. Right. Yes, it was uh, 93. I was still at school. Yeah. So my question is, uh, the the where they I don't know how to the 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 where they took the the blood the marrow. So so in just future, the, just explain future, this. Will you, I have any? Sorry, sorry? You, you you say you donated marrow to yes. your late brother. Yes, my late brother, because okay. I was the exact match. Okay, all right. Yeah, and and your question, question is, is yeah. My question is uh, where they, they they took the blood. Okay. And, and, yeah, at the back. It's at the back. All right. Sometimes I have to feel the pain. Like, the, I, I have to feel the stinging. On, on yourself. Okay, now I get it. I, I, I get the yeah. question. Thank you very much, Virginia. Excellent question. That Perhaps? is really fantastic because yeah. only 30% of siblings are generally a match for a patient. So that was phenomenal odds that she got to be her brother's donor. Mm. Um, in the past, as I mentioned, we, we did extract the, bone um, the stem cells from your bone marrow, which is not the way we do it at the moment. So it's very much um, almost like the process of donating platelets, where it actually comes out of your peripheral blood. So a needle will go into your one arm, the blood goes into a cell separator machine, where your blood stem cells would then come out. 
into a bag and you can see them, it's beautiful, and the rest of the blood that is not used goes back into your other arm. So it's no longer that painful procedure of sticking a needle into your bone? No, we had a donor the other day who was telling us about his experience and he said the most painful part of his donation was when the nurse pulled the plaster off because he's quite hairy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think it's a, it's a good point to you know, take a break on this point. Okay, let's go for a quick break. When we come back, we're now focused on treatment and support. Please stay with us. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. Well, we're talking leukemia and uh, our special guest, in, uh, first, first up in Cape Town, Dr. Nara, who's a clinical hematologist based at the Hematology and Bone Marrow uh, Transplant Center uh, at Melomet Tokai Hospital. And here in our Johannesburg studio, Alana James, CEO of the Sunflower Fund. And we're now joined by another special guest, Nontlantla Duba who is a, um, a clinical health specialist advocacy at Cancer. Welcome to Health Talk. Thank you. Thank you. First, let's stay with you. Uh, we were talking earlier about, you know, um, uh, obviously awareness and, and, you know, how much people know about this. And yes. so, so perhaps just tell us a little bit about what you do for leukemia at Cancer. At Cancer. Thank you. Uh, at Cancer, much as we don't give treatment, we're not involved in treatment, but we collaborate with all the partners that are relevant in terms of ensuring that cancer is generally well handled. Mm -hmm. So at, at, in our organization, we know that, firstly, we know that uh, cancer is difficult to live with. Mm -hmm. So we've got a very strong supportive role, mm -hmm. especially when the patients are undergoing treatment. Okay. Because as it has been said on the impact, the, 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 the treatment impacts the family because it's a long-standing treatment which drains them financially and also psychologically. Mm -hmm. Because the psychological support is very, very important as well. Mm -hmm. So Cancer Association uh, acknowledges that there's, it's difficult to undergo cancer treatment. So we've got TLC homes that are organized in such a way that the parents, because if it's a child, for example, will be in their oncology unit is being treated for a long-term period. Mm. And you know that the treatment centers are not all over the country. Mm. So people sometimes are not able to access the treatment centers. Mm. So these TLC uh, homes or that, that provide uh, care and support for the child, the teenagers, and even for the parents during the treatment. Mm period. Okay. So they'll be able to access the treatment now and again. Okay. So you basically, we basically offer, support offer support that, support. which also goes with a lot of psychological support, right. mm -hmm. even transportation as well. Okay. I'm going to yes. ask you to comment on that okay. perhaps when we now talk about support, okay. more of that, you know, in the next segment. Now, talking about treatment, mm -hmm. let's cross over to Cape Town and speak to Dr. Nara. Dr. Okay. Nara, let's start our discussion now on how we treat this condition. What treatment options are out there? Well, um, for leukemia as a group, um, we usually treat this with chemotherapy. Yes. These are fast-growing uh, white blood cells that are usually very sensitive to chemicals in the form of what we call chemotherapy, which holds the growth of cells. Also normal cells, and that is what causes the side effects. So we're talking about normal cells, normal white blood cells, normal red blood cells, and normal platelets. So you may have, with intensive chemotherapy, a period where your bone marrow doesn't work. So we have to do blood transfusions, plated transfusions and antibiotics to replace the normal bone marrow function. But that is usually only applicable for intense chemotherapy for the acute leukemias. We make sure that the patient has got good organ function prior. We will do counseling, psychological counseling, we make sure that the patient has good venous access, usually with a central line in the form of a porter cat uh, or like a little port that we insert in one of the central veins. Mm. And then um, we, we give um, chemotherapy in cycles. Mm. Uh, with other words, say every month we give a cycle over like over one week or so that the patient gets intense chemotherapy. And then as a result of the chemotherapy, 
The patients usually get mucositis, which means that their um, mucosa sloughs off from mouth till anus, which is one of the major side effects. Okay, before we, talk, before we pain, talk a lot stomach more pain, on... Swallowing pain, diarrhea. We have to support this patient intensely during this period. All right. Um, then we need to transfuse the whole time. We, the patient's uh, white cells are completely suppressed, so they have no immune system. They get severe bacterial infections that we yeah. treat with antibiotics. And they can get severe bleeding that we try to prevent with plate transfusions. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of side effects on this. But, so, yes. but for now, let's take a call off on the line who has a question or comment. Mabatu from Soweto. Welcome to Health Talk, Mabatu. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm okay. It's not snack pack. I want to find out that my boyfriend, uh, he went to chemo yesterday. But last month he went to chemo. And then uh, when he was sleeping, the reason from the hospital, when he was sleeping here, he, he was sick. Yeah? And then I went to like, uh, 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 and then after that, I was a Pakistan stroke. Is that a, 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 a part of a chemo? Nah? I okay. want to find it out that. All right. Let, let's, let's, okay, I'll interpret this. Let, 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 let's ask the doctor the question. So the question is, Mabatu has a boyfriend who has undergone chemo. He's had the second cycle of chemotherapy. So last night or two nights ago, whenever, uh, during the night, um, he appeared to have had a stroke because he was frothing from the mouth and they was told that he had a stroke. Is that one of the side effects of treatment? Well, look, um one of the major side effects is um, that you get a suppression of your platelet production. Right. So there is a phase where they have got very low platelet counts, mm -hmm. and that can give sometimes a significant bleed. So it might be that this is actually not a stroke, but an intracranial bleeding, so mm -hmm. a bleeding in the brain, which may present like a stroke. Mm -hmm. that, that is one of the complications that may occur, but. Uh, usually we observe these patients very intensely um, in hospital. So uh, the other reason why this patient might have had a stroke, that the uh, cancer per se is a hypercoagulable condition, which means that you can clot easily. Mm -hmm. And what might have happened is just because he had a cancer, that he developed a clot and that was in his brain. And as a result of that, he got a stroke. Um, so sometimes we give anticoagulation or anti-clotting agents to prevent these um, devastating complications. All right. Let's come to Alana. Alana, we, we've heard from cancer just what is it that they do in terms of you know, a treatment. What about Sunflower Fund, apart from wanting, obviously, donors? Right, so we work in two areas. So with the clinicians and the treatment centers, we assist with some of the funds for patients. So if you are in need of a stem cell donor and you can't afford to have the South African Bone Marrow Registry search the donor for you, mm. the doctors can apply for funding so we can assist there. Once they've found a donor, certain medical aids and definitely our state patients, um, they're not covered to actually harvest those stem cells or collect the stem cells, mm. which is a cost, and the Sunflower Fund can assist. So those are the two areas where we assist financially. Mm. And then we assist around creating awareness for families um, who have a family member um, that's been diagnosed. So we do a lot of awareness, we recruit the donors, and we've also now just started setting up support groups mm -hmm. for families. We work very closely, as was mentioned before, with a lot of the other organizations, mm -hmm. because you're impacted in so many ways. Mm -hmm. This isn't one of the industries where you can afford to work in isolation. Mm -hmm. So we have to partner with others. So we have a very close relationship with other support. So sometimes it's just to connect patients and families yeah. to support them. We're going to give out contact details for both organizations, but for people out there, how do they know where to find <coughs> cancer, where to find Sunflower Fund? How, how well do people know about you guys? Maybe, I, maybe I can come in, but maybe before I answer that question, yeah. I just want to add a very important aspect of the supportive role that is done by Cancer Association. Right. For example, uh, 
uh, currently, in fact, it will be starting very soon. We are having, uh, embarking on a campaign about the awareness to the community about the childhood diseases. Right. And we know that leukemia is number one cancer mm -hmm. that affects the children. Mm -hmm. So the reason that we also campaign is to create awareness, especially about the signs and symptoms mm -hmm. of these uh, cancer uh, leukemias, because they're not just very easy to identify them. So we just, we show them, for example, the government deals with the Sensilian uh, system that is, that is out there, that is categorized to say that when you've got any signs that you see, for example, the severe bleeding, there's some patches on your eyes, there's tenderness where there's pain when you are being touched, mm. or there's bleeding, or find that you just swell mm. and without any cause, or you lose weight, or there's anemia that you experience. So we just create that awareness that it could be leukemia. So the campaigns are a very, very strong part of us okay. that we do, as we'll be having the children's campaign uh, to create awareness about their, their cancers. Right. You reminded yes. me about something that I yes. needed to clarify. Somebody from the floor asked, what is this bone tenderness? Yes. It's pain in the bone area when you get touched. Yes. But before, we, I, I believe we have a caller on the line, Lo Lochenberg from Cape Town. Lochenberg, welcome to Health Talk. Yes. Hello. Hello, Lochenberg. Your question or comment, please. Okay. I just want to find out, sir, um, my friend, she had le leukemia. Yeah. And her brother was her bone marrow match. Yeah. And she had an operation in Khrushchev. But then, after a while, she got sick again with the same problem. And then she, she died. In Tigerberg Hospital okay. of leukemia. I I just want to find out why. Okay. All right. Th thank you for the question, Lochenberg. And I'm sorry about you know your friend sister. Uh, but unfortunately, we've run out of time now. Uh, Dr. Naro, I'd like you to please take note of that question. When we come back after the break, then I'd like you to please just respond to the, to, to Lochenberg. Okay. Time for another quick break. When we come back, we we'll continue our discussion on treatment and support. Please stay with us. diagnosed with breast cancer at stage four um, in 2013. After chemotherapy and uh, radiation and quite a few surgeries, I went into remission for about 18 months. Um, and on my 18 month checkup, we found that the breast cancer had come back and we found that I had uh, leukemia. If you need a donor and you've got a sibling, there's a one in four chance of any one of your siblings being a donor. If you don't have a sibling donor and you have to go out into the general wide world and look for a random donor, the chance is one in a hundred thousand of that person being a match. The actual transplants were organized by the South African Bone Marrow Registry. The Sunflower Fund is the fundraising arm that goes out and organizes drives and campaigns to get people to donate and become members of the donor system. I, I love what I do. Um, it's the people, it's the patients. They are really special, special people. Just treating them in a holistic way, because that's really what we do. We, we treat them physiologically, psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually, and their families as well. So we follow a journey with them from the time they started as they're diagnosed. 
They don't keep anything back. And so they would share some of themselves and they're extremely good listeners as well. I'm a, I'm a talker, so I very much enjoy talking and uh, they, they, they always had, a, had an ear to listen, regardless of how, how busy the wards were or how much work there was to do. And many days you, you lying in the wards, you could, you could hear or see that um, it's hectically busy, but always they, they, they always had time um, to listen. There are no significant health risks in donating stem cells. Um, it's a very simple, straightforward procedure. There is a huge importance for South Africans to become donors on the registry because finding a match is part of your ethnic base, so it's part of your culture. The chances of finding a match outside of your culture is really minimal. And in South Africa, we always talk about this great rainbow nation. Well, the rainbow nation of South Africa causes some challenges in finding that match because we're so diverse culturally that we need as many people as possible to join the registry. All right, we're going to talk about how to join the registry. Now, earlier on, before the break, we had a caller from Lochenbeck who asked, you know, uh, a, a question from, sort of from, from Cape Town. But before we give a response to that question, let's take another caller. This time is Mum Catherine from Bretts. Mum Catherine, welcome to Health Talk. Yes, good morning, Doctor. Morning, ma'am. You have a question? Uh, yes, Doctor. I, I've got a problem. I've got red spot here on my breast, on my left hand side. You've got what? And sometimes this breast is. Red spot, oh, like okay. blood. Yes. Yes. Sometimes here, yeah, down here, uh, to the to those nipples is painful. Okay. All right. Have you... I did. Yes, I did went to the doctor. Doctor. Yeah. I did went to the doctor. The doctor sent me to to do the mammogram. They said I haven't got nothing, but it's painful. Okay. All right. Th thanks, Mum Catherine. It's it's probably uh, okay. Let's see what the doctor says, but it's probably not related to leukemia. Doctor Nara, you probably had the question. Let's start with Lochenberg's question, please, if if you will. Doctor Nara. Yes. Yeah. Lochenberg asked the okay, question. So the yeah. Okay. So to answer that question. Um, look, leukemia, especially acute leukemia, is a devastating condition. I mean, the abnormality lies in the leukemic stem cell, which you actually cannot destroy with chemotherapy only. So that's why we give several cycles of chemotherapy to reduce the leukemic burden. But eventually, in adults, we need to replace the bone marrow with healthy stem cells and a healthy immune system to kill off the leftover leukemic stem cells. So this patient relapsed and that was the cause of death. And that is the cause of death for most acute leukemia patients. That's why the overall outcome, overall survival of acute leukemias is about 50%. Yeah. And if you do a stem cell transplantation, you gain about 10 to 15% extra survival. Um, but you cannot cure with other words, you can't get 100% life expectancy for a similar person that does not have that similar condition. Mm -hmm. So with other words, um, we can not only cure with chemotherapy, uh, we need an immune system, ideally from a healthy donor, uh, ideally from a sibling, to actually fight and kill off the leftover leukemia cells. All right. Then, of course, Mum Catherine asked a question about, you know, having red spots on her breast. That, just to confirm that it's probably not related to leukemia. Is that correct? Well, I'm not so sure whether she's talking about breast cancer or a leukemic presentation, which can sometimes affect the skin uh, on the breast. But, I mean... <laughs> It's difficult to, uh, yeah. to uh, figure this out, but um, leukemia can basically present in every single organ of your body because blood flows everywhere. Okay, so if um, she's got a problem... And it's not uncommon yeah. that you have got uh, what we call leukemia cutis or uh, leukemic uh, cells in the skin. Yeah. But we still treat it the same way, um, which is essentially chemotherapy. Uh, and we give several cycles to reduce the leukemic uh, burden. 
and then we consolidate, so we wrap everything up with this stem cell transplantation. All right, Th thank you so much for, for that response. Uh, Ma'am Catherine, perhaps if, if you're still watching, we're not necessarily saying that you have leukemia, but if your red spots are continuing to be a problem, they're growing in size, they're becoming, you know, uh, uh, itchy and, and so on, please go back and see your doctor. But for now, if you've been told you're okay, you probably are okay. Let's come back to treatment support, treatment and support. I mean, we, we've heard about, you know, holistic treatment. Uh, perhaps let's start with you. And we've heard about the registry. Tell us a bit more about the registry. How does it work? Right, so what you would do is we have a health questionnaire that we would go through and if you are between the ages of 18 and 45 and in relatively good health and most importantly willing to help anyone in need, mm -hmm. the Sunflower Fund would then assist you. Um, we will do your registration. You will then take your registration form and go and donate your two teaspoons of blood, which is two small test tubes, mm -hmm. and we will use those two samples to send through to the laboratories and they will do the genetic test or the HLA typing and that information will be stored on the registry and any doctors who have patients who need a stem cell transplant they will then search can you the get registry. sick from donating no is it a painful procedure no I am terrified of needles I am a stem cell donor I donate platelets regularly and I think you know I'm gonna say for myself it's not comfortable because I I'm not comfortable with needles but it is five minutes of uncomfort to save somebody's life. Mm. When you are donating um, your two teaspoons of blood, or your, te your, your two teaspoons of blood, it is under 10 minutes um, of your time. So it is not a painful process, and okay. it doesn't open you up to, to any diseases. Okay. Your last word from cancer in terms of holistic you know, treatment and support? Very important, <coughs> excuse me, in terms of the counseling that we offer in terms of understanding their diseases and the side effects of the treatment and how the disease presents. But the another part is that we also dispel myths that are accompanied by having diseases like leukemia mm. because people will come up with a lot of information that is definitely not true because there are myths and then in terms of as opposed to facts. For example, there'll be a myth that if you've had a uh, leukemia, then your mental state is not going to be as sharp as you were mm. and you won't progress properly at school. That is just a myth. Mm. And another one is asso associated with affecting your fertility. Mm. There's a lot of information that you may not be fertile, mm. not be able to have children. It depends on the extent of the disease mm. and the stage at which the disease was discovered yeah. and the type of treatment and the extent of the treatment mm. that the patient right. might have had. Yes. Okay, Th thank you so much ladies for your valuable input and I hope mm -hmm. that everybody now is inspired to donate and everybody knows about leukemia and treatment and support. Well, folks, that's, that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we meet again next week, same time. And if you've missed any of our shows, you can please get them on YouTube. I'm Dr. Salomon Doe. Please do take care.